Hey everybody, it's uh, John with uh, Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems here, ArmUS. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my camera so everybody can see me and uh, we're good to go. Anyway, um, what we're doing today is uh, basically uh, revisiting Raptor Maps. And uh, Raptor Maps has been uh, um, kind of a partner of ArmUS and working a little bit with uh, some of the new um, uh, thermal stuff that's coming up as well as uh, rolling with uh, uh, new developments, mainly thermal. I mean, we've had some serious concentration on trying to get any kind of thermal tools out there for everybody and using it to, uh, to get good deliverables out to the people. So we wanted to revisit a little bit. We did a webinar with them last year, um, talked about uh, to Nikhil about uh, what their staff was doing and what they were currently working on there. So I wanted to uh, introduce uh, Nikhil, who is the um, CEO, president of uh, Raptor Maps. Can you I hear can, me, Nikhil? John. Thanks for the introduction. Awesome. So if you don't mind looking at my face for a minute, um, we just, like I said, we'll just kind of uh, in, get right into the, the guts of it. So this, this is the first of uh, a couple of series that we're going to be doing with Raptor Maps. Uh, one is basically, you know, understanding what the company does, why it might be a little bit different, how it's going to work with some of the tools and some of the, um, what you can produce, if you will, for deliverables and kind of how the system works as far as working with Raptor Maps and getting good data out to the people. So there's that. The second part is that we're going to be running through um, a scheduled webinar that, that it will be uh, how to basically start from start to finish from thermal camera operation, solar field panels, into what do I do with my images? Am I doing them correctly? To put, putting them over into Raptor Maps, processing, and then basically having a deliverable. So that will be the next one. We'll concentrate on a couple of different pieces. Um, we'll hope to hear some feedback from you guys uh, as far as any of that goes. And additionally, just remember, during this presentation, it's more kind of a talking. We're just kind of seeing where we are. And then as well as we will be able to get some uh, questions going from uh, some of the audience. We'll try to answer those as much as possible. But please do, if you want to, just keep the questions like very relative to this. Because sometimes when we do the webinars, we'll get 500 questions. And some of the questions aren't really questions. They're just like, yeah, I can, I can see you. I can hear you. It looks good. It looks this. So anyway, anything that's really relative to that, we'll try to filter a little bit of questions. But Remember, if I don't get to your question today, we'll be actually sending these over to Raptor Maps to be able to, to uh, basically get those other questions answered if you have any specific things to Raptor Maps. The other portion is if you have anything specific to equipment or cameras or anything like that, that is what basically I will do. So for now, like I said, I mean, I've got a couple of good questions for um, Nikhil on basically what he does, what they're doing, and where they're going. So, um, Nikhil, still, still with me? And, and I am saying that right, right? Nikhil. <laughs> Such an awesome, awesome name. You're, you're a pretty straight shooter, John. I, I'd correct you if, uh, if you weren't. Awesome. Don't worry. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, one, of the, one of the questions that we have is basically what is Raptor Maps? Um, when was the company founded? And what is the company all about? Let's see what that's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So for, uh, for those of you online uh, who aren't familiar with Raptor Maps, um, we're a software company. Uh, we build software for asset management. Uh, using drone data. So our, our main areas of expertise are machine learning and thermal drone data, which is why, uh, as John said, we're really focused on, on thermal here today. Um, and our, our big uh, kind of value is in the actual deliverables. So we'll work really hard with our clients to understand what are they trying to get out of the drone data, um, what insights are actionable, what other sources of information do we need to connect to, and really put that together in a comprehensive package to move the whole industry forward. Um, so our, our areas of uh, expertise, machine learning and thermal, and then our three main products are uh, Raptor Solar, which we're going to talk quite a bit about today, um, Enterprise AI, um, which is for larger organizations that have uh, drone programs that are looking to train machine learning algorithms for, for um, pretty specific purposes, and then the Raptor app for drone data management, which some of you uh, may be familiar with. So that's a little bit about the company, and then I'm, I'm happy to talk uh, a little bit about about our background and our history as well. Yeah, that'd be great.
All right. So yeah, Raptor Maps, we were uh, founded in 2015 uh, by MIT engineers. So uh, myself, I'm the CEO of Raptor Maps. Uh, you may see my co-founder, Eddie, our CTO, posting on uh, on the forum that John administers, the, the FLIR forum, quite a bit. Um, so he handles all of our um, all of our software and product development. Um, we are experts in machine learning and drones. Um, initially, when we founded the company, we were actually doing um, true end-to-end, -end, as in building, you know, carbon fiber fixed-wing aircraft with uh, thermal uh, thermal cameras, you know, multispectral, uh, you name it. Deploying that hardware, collecting training data, training machine learning algorithms based on that, and, and so forth. And the great thing is, as the industry has evolved, uh, and a lot of you have, have kind of grown up in this industry and seen it, um, the hardware that you can get from providers like RMUS and, and, and what's available is becoming easier to use, uh, more tightly integrated, more powerful. And that's allowed us to focus exclusively on the software side of it um, and really make our customers successful and help them understand, OK, uh, when you're trying to detect a certain condition, here are the best practices for for collecting that data, and here's what we're able to detect. Um, so, you know, we're completely focused on on software nowadays. Um, our some of our clients include it's generally anyone who who flies a drone. Um, a lot of companies that do operations and maintenance. Um, a lot of their field technicians will be using drones. Um, asset managers, um, construction companies, and lots of drone service providers and drone professionals. So oftentimes in, in some of the different verticals that, that we work in, um, drone professionals will, um, you know, they'll have made connections, they'll want to they'll wanna fly for, uh, and we'll talk about the example in solar in particular. And so they'll come to us and say, you know, I've got this customer, I have, you know, I'm thinking about flying for them, what deliverable do I need to provide them in order to, you know, be successful, make them happy, make them come back for more business. So um, right. that's a lot of what we do as well. I'm trying to get, just an FYI, I'm trying to share your screen here, uh, just in case you had any backslides that was going on. Um, but I seem to be having a, there we go, had a boy. <laughs> yep, I think that is the one. Yep, there we go. You can, uh, you can see a picture of our, uh, our faces here. So this is basically what yep. I was just talking through. <laughs> yep, good to go. Is, uh, a name. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit of background on, on Raptor Maps. Uh, perfect. So, um, as far as like, uh, just in general, uh, when we're, when we had met, uh, previously, um, basically I had met Eddie at a agricultural show. And at that time, it was a couple of years ago. And at that time, um, I had a lot of questions on what value, uh, Raptor maps could bring to the table as far as like working specifically with, uh, with thermal. It just seemed that there was not a whole lot of good workflow understanding or anything like that as far as uh, you know what to do with with the uh, thermal side of things and and since that's kind of uh, uh, you know initially my thing and and arm us's thing uh, a lot of the tools that were out there the workflow the understanding everything else um, where where have you guys really developed into that space it seems like you guys have really kind of like that is the space that you're kind of hitting really hard right now yeah, absolutely. And, and thermal really led us, you know, our, our expertise in thermal um, led us into some of the verticals that we're, um, that we're really focused on today, um, including solar. And, um, you know, you'll, you guys probably know this being on the, you know, on the hardware and the distribution side, but it's a, a huge, um, it's a huge uh, industry for applying thermal because the, the value proposition is so, is so clear. Um, and it's mm -hmm. saving people a lot of time and a lot of labor costs. So, yeah, initially, yeah. Um, when you met us, we were, you know, we were um, starting in, in agriculture. But the challenge there from a data perspective is that when you're training, um, you know, any sort of and when I say machine learning, um, you know, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, just think like really fancy statistics. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're when you're doing statistics, you still need to know exactly what's going on. Um, you know, uh, we call this ground truthing and the resolution um, kind of needs to match. So if I'm looking at, you know, an acre of land or I'm looking at a solar panel or, or part of a solar panel, my knowledge about that, of, of what's true in order to train an algorithm needs to match that. And mm. so um, so the challenge in agriculture is that that we don't always have that nice ground truth layer to match up with uh, with the drones. And I'll, um, for those of you who, who may be in that space, I do have a lot of um, advice for how to how to get that and be successful at it. 
But um, in solar, we see that people are essentially farming light. Um, so it's a lot of the same uh, lessons, but it's a very clear uh, value proposition, a very clear way to um, train our software. Right. And so I know that like that's probably been one of the more common questions is like, what what does Raptor Maps, what, what are we going to be able to do in the agricultural space as far as what they they can provide this uh, information for us? And and I will say that even though um, a lot of the times and this is this is just kind of where you guys are at and versus maybe if you wanted to consider them competitors, which we really don't because you're such a specialized uh, type of deliverable was that I had found talking to a lot of surveying companies, a lot of uh, actual infrastructure inspection companies, that a lot of the images and pictures that people take, that take a lot of time. So if you're doing a, or building a 3D model and the camera has to be faced nadir or anything like that, when we have to do obliques and all of that, so that takes a ton of time. But what is really the usable data when it comes down to 3D modeling? And, and I've just heard a lot of feedback that it's really not that important that uh, most of the other stuff is is what you guys are producing in a way to to give uh, appropriate annotations and data. Now I'm not saying that 3D models are not you know good. It's just that have you seen any need to create uh, such things um, besides it being kind of a whoop de doo factor? Um, typically, so I will say there is value in a 3D model when it's um, extremely accurate. So if you can make a 3D model, you know, down to you know, sub, you know, sub inch resolution and, and even smaller than that, then it makes sense. But the challenge is that's not the type of 3D model that people are generating with drones. Um, you know, they're typically uh, taking a bunch of images, um, 360, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, they're trying to create, you know, create a 3D model. And oftentimes you guys have seen it, you know, it may look a little bit melted, a little bit warped, a little bit skewed. So, so you've, you've created a, a visualization and some customers may be interested in that. But um, at the end of the day, if you want to make a really, really good 3D model, um, you know, LiDAR is, is going to be the way to do it. And that's a, that's an entirely different workflow. And so mm -hmm. it's interesting because LiDAR is very expensive. Um, but the people who, um, you know, buy it and use it and, and all that are doing it for a specific reason. And so, uh, you know, I would definitely work backwards and understand if your client really wants a 3D model, um, try to understand, well, are they willing to, to pay for like a LiDAR scan or something that accurate? And the, if the answer is no, I, you know, I just kind of wanted it to, to see what was going on, um, then chances are they probably don't need a 3D model. Understood. Yeah. And that, 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 I think a lot of the, like I said, there's a lot of information and I'm just going to switch back to my uh, my visual camera here so that you guys can see me um, I mean we well, have a lot of tools out there that we can use that uh, utilizes uh, you know heavy megapixel you guys have seen me post uh, some of the some of the cameras I've been working with the uh, 100 megapixel and the 50 megapixel and how much information that is and it and and again that's usually used for um, generating uh, good photogrammetry in a nadar, nadar sense, uh, and, it, and it works really well for that at higher heights, uh, good ground sampling distances. But as far as uh, you know, deciding um, what kind of uh, uh, thermal, because be, let me back up. When we go into thermal, those sensors that are available for UAS right now, and I have a couple of here just to show you, and, and I'm, I just wanted to get some feedback from Unikill on why it would be important to have certain sensors versus others, but we're mainly dealing with basically a FLIR Duo, standard FLIR uh, view, so it's got an SD card, and then our all-time favorite, the XT, since it's currently integrated into some of the DJI products. Um, is, is the information that you're getting from any one of these three possible cameras any different to make it uh, a better um, map, a better solution? Is there anything that makes one better than the other as far as just thermal capability? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, the first thing I always ask our customers um, when they have a thermal camera, they're thinking of getting a thermal camera is whether or not it's radiometric. Um, radiometric cameras, although more expensive, are much more versatile because they're actually capturing you know, that radiometric data in every pixel. And that means when you go to uh, process it, um, you haven't you haven't lost any data. Um, so if you contrast that with maybe a non-radiometric camera, 
then, um, you know, if you have something like something really shiny in the field of view, for example, um, that's going to make everything else really dim. And, and that's effectively putting out a color image. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there's not too much you can do with it from that point. So, so that's yeah. one consideration. Um, the second one is the, you know, the metadata um, integration. So you, you kind of mentioned the XT. Um, that's something that we pushed really hard for uh, is to make sure there's good metadata associated with each picture. And what I mean by metadata is, you know, is there a timestamp? Is there their altitude information encoded? Is there gimbal information? For a lot of the things we do, um, this is really important. Uh, and it really speeds up the turnaround time and it improves the quality of deliverable um, that we can give someone. So, you know, verifying that your your images have a lot of that um, and the more tightly integrated systems do um, is is really important. And then the the last one you brought up was the, the duo. And I think that that's a really important point as well, because that one, for those of you who aren't familiar, has a, um, a color camera associated with it as well. And oftentimes, um, if you if you look at um, you know a thermal image, that's only part of the story. It's a huge part of the story. But with the color image, you can really get a much better sense of okay, was this actually a temperature difference, or is there some surface property going on here that I couldn't really tell? But with a higher resolution color image, you you can say ah, that's that's what's going on. I understand yeah. it, and you have a much yeah. better sense of of you know what to do with that information sure and on the technical side right now just from from uh, my playing around with this um, currently trying to feed it into the uh, inspection slash get information over to you so we're gonna we're gonna um, set this up for the the next webinars to try to pull a couple of different things from different cameras that we do have um, to try and get the best suited uh, uh, setup the problem with uh, thermal cameras that we've learned in the that I have learned in the past, of trying to tell somebody what works the best, uh, a lot of that is driven by by basically pricing. You know, I I've got six thousand dollars to spend on a thermal camera, and that and that's it. And so, uh, a lot of that driving of pricing, what I'm basically hearing from Unikill is that. In order to get the best data, sometimes we do have to get the appropriate sensor that's going to be on whatever camera it is, and then it makes your life a whole lot easier as well as getting good data back out to uh, the as a deliverable to your customer. Right, and oftentimes, you know, sometimes we will get customers who who are just stuck with they're stuck with what they're stuck with, and we will do our best to educate them on and say, you know, this is what we can do, um, even with mm -hmm. your setup. And this is what um, this is what you need a, a better setup to do. So it's not necessarily binary, but of course, you know, from from our perspective, we're always pushing for the best input data possible. Right, and 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 on my end of of, of uh, basically thermal understanding is that there is a lot of uh, the, all three of these. Like I said, I'm, I've got all three of these cameras. They are actually all radiometric. They all do radiometric. So this this actually does. Um, the, the advanced radiometric rather than just the, the standard radiometric. But either way, all three of these can do that kind of information. And the way that you operate them is really just the, is the only difference, is how they are integrated, run into, and, and doing that. So um, just real quick, Nikhil, I wanted to uh, put out a poll question. Um, hopefully everybody can see these when we get to that. Uh, let's see. And this is that first one because we are a little bit concentrating a little bit more on the on the thermal stuff, but we'll go into more infrastructure stuff. But um, let's see, let's just launch this. And uh, answer as you need to here. Um, this is uh, just a simple: Do you have or currently have a drone with a thermal camera? Uh, whether it's an XT, whether it's um, you know just something strapped on the bottom. Um, this is just a, yes, I have one, or we're working on one here pretty soon. So just some of the numbers that I'm uh, seeing here, you got 40%, 45% that say yes, 40 to 40% that say no, and then 16% uh, that are say that they're kind of working on it. So numbers are kind of jumping a little bit, but that's uh, just a good gauge of where everybody's at as far as doing any kind of, kind of thermal stuff. So. Um, and then I'm just going to push this next question right off the get go. Is uh, let's see, what is your 
main application because then we might be able to answer some other questions that's kind of those that are regarding the uh, where we're going with this and 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 help uh, Nikhil and I kind of figure out what we're what we should kind of focus our um, next webinar slash some of the webinars on and how Raptor Maps can help you. So uh, what is your main application currently right now? Are you doing solar? Are you doing search and rescue, which is a quite different infrastructure, agriculture, or a little bit of everything or other being I don't focus on anything specific. I'm just kind of doing my thing. <laughs> so. And some of the numbers we're running into that, Nikhil, so you can see that. We're running 41% on solar. Uh, search and rescue is at, it's at the attendees that I currently have, running at 20%. Infrastructure is up at the high at 65%, agriculture at 30 and we're running 43% of the people that do other. Now you can, again, choose multiples here. So this is just looks like the majority of the people are doing infrastructure inspection. And I've got about 30% of the answers coming in as agriculture. Half of you are doing solar. So that's pretty good. All right. So um, I do have uh, um, some other like uh, simple questions to ask. Um, so can you tell me more about why you guys are focused on the solar side? So just doing that poll question, I don't have that many attendees that are doing solar, but you know, is that something that people are going to uh, want to get into, do a little bit more of? Um, why is it you guys are concentrating heavy in that vertical, if you will? Yeah, so it, it's really a question of, of timing and how that, how that industry works. So right now, um, the companies that are responsible for, for the operations and maintenance, so it's called O&M, the, the people who run the solar farms, um, there's a pretty big labor shortage of, of good skilled technicians and they have to cover a lot of area. These are really, um, these are pretty large farms. Uh, and mm -hmm. even the smaller ones, they, they have what's called a portfolio typically, meaning lots of, lots of farms. Some can be big, some can be small, but they're geographically pretty spread out. So it's, uh, it takes a lot of time for people to actually go through and inspect these. And some of the processes can be very manual. And what's mm -hmm. happened is that they're realizing that you can directly replace um, the manual processes, you know, the actual electrical testing um, with with drones, uh, with aerial thermography. And so that has become very mainstream. And the asset owners, the people who contract with the operations and maintenance companies are, are much, much more comfortable nowadays with um, with uh, a, a aerial thermal inspection of their solar uh, power plant. Right. And so, you know, we see the whole industry shifting over to, to using drones in a very quick, uh, very short time span. And we're um, we're already seeing this. Some of the some of the largest companies with massive, massive portfolios all the way down to, you know, what I would say are, are solar, quote unquote, startups that, you know, may have 50 megawatts or 100 megawatts. Um, they're all using this technology. And so, you know, now they're they're asking us. You know, how do I um, how do I capture the data? Or a lot of them are asking us, you know, can you link us up with with good people that provide the services, or at least educate the industry so we can find good people that are providing these services? And so, you know, that's where it's it's great for us as a software company because we are, um, you know, we we want to make you guys successful, uh, and so that's um, you know that's why we're really focused on that. The timing is is just perfect right now. Yeah. Okay. So some of the, some of the value that you might, I mean, so, so one of the questions that we get often is like, where, where does the ROI for my cameras? So we're talking about, you know, huge, huge solar panel fields to a point. We've got ones that might be intermediate that are not all that big. And then we've got like residential slash small commercial properties. Does the, does, do you think your, your product can fit into a number of those? Or do you see a lot of people doing the smaller uh, vertical, if you will, the smaller commercial properties? You know, I get, we've got some places that have like parking structures that now have sandal, uh, uh, solar panels on top of them. Obviously residential, you know, systems doing, you know, what is the true ROI when it comes down to, to size that you have seen or your opinion of seeing that? Yeah, that's a great question. So on the utility scale side, um, utility scale, just meaning the really big solar farm. So we've done, um, done facilities, you know, over 250 megawatts. Um, it's a lot of the actual labor cost for them to actually go out and inspect every single panel. Um, so that's, you know, you're talking over a thousand acres there. 
Um, we've also done a lot of smaller facilities. You're talking about like, um, you know, the, uh, the roofs of distribution centers, carports, um, school districts, things like that. And, yeah. you know, for, and the reason that, that companies are, are seeing an ROI there is because, you know, it costs them a lot of money to send a, a technician out to an area. And if they either don't know what needs to be repaired and, and they, they have to make two trips or, you know, they don't need to make a trip at all, it's a lot easier to find somebody who, you know, has a, a drone with a thermal camera close by um, that can image that installation. And then um, the way we price it on the software side is by capacity. So our deliverables just scale up and down with um, with the actual capacity of the solar farm. Um, uh, and so that's why and that's how the, the companies are used to being uh, being built. So it makes a lot of sense to for us. It, it doesn't really matter if it's a really large facility or a really small one, uh, but the value to the customer may be a little bit different depending on what it is. Right. And so I'd say, I think a lot of the times, like I said, because it seems like, you know, this initial um, webinar that we're doing right now is just kind of looking at what your guys' market is focused on, what you're trying to trying to move into, and then coming up with some ideas on how to, how to push forward into that. But can you talk a little bit about some of the actual non-thermal stuff that you guys are doing that are more in that infrastructure type range? Um, you know, because like I said, you guys don't do 3D model processing or anything like that, but how does that, how does the just, you know, if you're not doing solar, I don't have an XT, but I want to be, you know, using Raptor maps. What are some of the other um, things that you've, you have, you guys have specialized in? Yeah, so we have the the Raptor app. It's a drone data management system, and and you know what it's meant for is uploading. Um, obviously, you can do thermal, um, and, but it also you know you can put in your color imagery as well. And what it does is, you know, instead of creating a three D model, it'll project those images out in three D, um, and then from there you can um, mark areas of interest. There are a lot of organizational permissions, so you can set certain access levels. So. For example, if you're coordinating a fleet of drone service providers or, or your own pilots, you can create sub accounts for them and give them, you know, one way or, or read only access, things like that. So it's a good way to, to bring that data in. Um, and then you can share it with your clients as well. So uh, and within the Raptor app, um, you can also if you want to, um, you can order things like radiometric ortho mosaics, um, you know, slap maps for long, lin long linear corridor maps and things like that. Uh, but the other thing we we encourage our customers is, as we say, you know, if we're if we're running that data through, um, obviously, you know, some of these these fancier features we charge, you know, by the uh, by the photo. Um, so we don't charge by the photo to use the platform. But if you're if we're making a radiometric ortho mosaic or something and you order that in the platform, you know, we do charge for that. Um, but we tell them that, you know, if you already have, if, if you're not planning on canceling, you know, your Pix4D or drone deploy account or something like that, um, because you're, you're churning out that many maps and, and that's working for you, um, mm -hmm. then we can just import those into our platform. So, um, whereas if you're only making, you know, one or two a, a month, then it makes a lot of sense to, um, just use the Raptor app because, you know, you're, you're essentially paying for capacity that you may not be using. So. You know, we kind of counsel our, our own customers to help them understand, like, here is the here's the best way to, to use what we're providing. Yeah. Uh, we had a comment on one of the Facebook groups is, you know, there is a lot of people that just kind of want to do a one stop shop. They don't want to have a subscription here and a subscri subscription there. And how, how do we you know, how can we just put it all in one space? And I think when we do this next uh, this next webinar with you guys that we'll be able to explain a little bit more on the workflow and exactly what's going on. But just remember and keep in mind that that you can find any of this stuff um, Raptor Maps at raptormaps.com as well as uh, they have a blog, um, some things to read about some of the stuff that they have done in the past and some of the things that might fall into the category in which you're doing um, and figuring out exactly exactly what to do. So. Um, I have one more poll question, and it is kind of, again, solar solar um, thing. Uh, let's see. It is just a simple, have you ever inspected a solar farm with a drone? Very simple question. And we'll see how many people have actually done this type of work in the kill. This was just to kind of give you an idea why or why not people may or may not want to uh, do this <laughs> or who is doing it. I'll give that a minute and um, 
And like I said, this could be a very specialized, um, this could be a very specialized uh, vertical that we're talking about doing uh, thermal and solar inspection. And uh, maybe something that you guys would be, you know, some of the some of this ver service. Yeah, you know, kind of the reason that that I'm curious about the answer to this question and and want to really understand our audience. Um, we had a, a, a drone professional who was who was providing drone services, um, had made the investment, uh, you know, in a thermal camera, um, and was trying to get into into the solar um, vertical. And he, he, you know, he went down a and kind of track down a, a local ser service provider that was doing um, some maintenance and installation. And they, they kind of said, Oh yeah, you know, this might be interesting. This might not be interesting, uh, but fine. Well, you know, you can do a few, um, a few sites uh, for us and, and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so um, he flew those sites. He, he flew really well. He followed all our, all our guidelines and, and everything like that. Turned around the deliverables um, from that proof of concept um, to that client. And they immediately went from, oh, we're not sure if this is useful to we are, you know, we want to promote you, promote this, um, push this out to all of their customers. So it really strengthened that relationship. It, it was a, a huge success story. Um, so I, I would encourage people, um, especially the, those 50 percent of you that, that already have the equipment, um, if you're looking at exploring this market, um, that's a really good way to do it is to, you know, do a proof of concept. Uh, you know, do a few megawatts, really show your clients the, the value of it. And um, I think you'll you will be shocked how well they're going to receive it. Yeah. Well, I get it, you know, in, a, in my flare group or basically my thermal camera group, I've got almost uh, I think there's approximately 1800 people in there now. And it's a very common question that we get, you know, as far as uh, I want to get into that vertical. I have people that are asking me to do it. I have a drone. What camera do I get? What do I do? And that's, that's kind of the big thing is uh, trying to answer the question on whether or not you know how to do it. A biggest stumble that I find, and, and again, we got to remember that John McBride is not a photographer or a videographer. I never have been. I, I just do it for fun. Uh, but when we get into thermal, a lot of the guys come from that kind of understanding. Got a drone. They've got photography experience. They may have videography experience. They might be a... Uh, director of that kind of stuff and then they move this vertical and getting people to ask them about thermal and so that becomes uh, like I said slightly problematic when you don't know exactly how it works or what it does because then the customer or client that you're possibly talking to is asking you questions to say well I I want to have this I I got to know exactly what the temperature of the panels are I got to go know exactly what's going on with every single little photo cell that's out there and some of this we can direct you know, a little bit better information um, in, 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 in order to, to save time and understand the ROI on what you're trying to uh, establish with your customer. Because when you make those promises, I notice that people are like, well, I, I didn't understand the camera didn't do that, you know, and, and, and then it's exactly the tools in which to process it, you know, how to, how to show them and, and understand that showing. Yeah, and that's where we made a really concerted effort. I mean, um, you know, so we put out a, a article in Solar Pro magazine. It's it's available online um, for really, you know, and that's for industry professionals to understand both what is the value in it and, and what are best practices for actually um, inspecting a, a PV system. Um, we also a few weeks ago did a, a webinar with um, with FLIR that was really focused on okay if, you know thermal thermal scanning of solar farms 101 you know here's how you do it um, and I think uh, you know the reason the reason we do that is because you know just like this whole industry has evolved um, you know Raptor Maps has too and and I think a year ago when we were talking uh, you know on this webinar we would have said yeah radiometric orthomosaics are you know they're they're the way to go. Um, and for solar, that's absolutely not the case. And so, you know, it's a little bit, uh, I would say, our own fault, too, um, you know, and, and being so excited about that, that um, we realized that, and, and, you know, radiometric orthomosaics are not the best deliverable for solar. And so yeah. what we're finding sometimes is that some people will be uh, a little bit quick on the draw. They're saying, great, I got a solar farm. I'm going to go fly it. And they'll go and fly, you know, 50, 60, 70 acres of thermal. Um, and they'll try to fly it in a way that that will make an ortho um, and that kind of misses the point of what the clients want because not only are you flying too high to get kind of a nice useful level of detail 
Um, but you know, you're going to be there for quite a while because you're, you're flying really high side laps and, and then there's no guarantee, you know, it's going to come out and you may get a gradient from, you know, passing cloud and things like that. So, you know, I still yeah. think there's a lot of value in, in doing that, but I think, um, anyone who is interested in doing solar should, um, you know, definitely take the half hour, hour, you know, really read, read through what the value is and what the best practices are. And, and that way you're, uh, you don't have to go out to the field twice. Okay. So we have, um, so just for now, we'll just go ahead and answer some of the questions that I've got that have kind of populated through. Um, you guys, like I said, you're more than welcome to put up questions or any comments uh, within the, the thing. It gets cataloged into the webinar and we'll try to get these back. But I've got a couple of them that kind of focus a little bit more of what Raptor Maps does rather than specifics on doing a job, which again, we'll do in the next series of, of stuff. But I've got uh, Drew Duffin. Drew Duffin uh, had asked, um, a few of our uh, security safety focused customers are very wary about cloud-based processing hosting due to possibly data security risk. How do we elevate this pain point? Will Raptor Maps create a local desktop version? That is the question. Yeah, that's a um, that's a great question. I, I and I would say a, a little bit of sneak peek. We um, we authored the um, article in in the Tower Times um, for this. I think it's coming out uh, maybe in April uh, about kind of cybersecurity for drones and, and all the different considerations around it. Because a lot of um, we work with a lot of energy companies as well that are particularly concerned about that. Um, I think you know the the, the cloud based question is twofold. Um, one is I think on the energy side, um, sometimes they want to be able to, um, you know, buy and, and hold an asset. And if that's, you know, a software asset, um, you know, it's easier for them to make that purchase. Uh, but the second point is, yeah, sometimes companies, um, they want to be able to install things on on premise and, and things like that. And so on the enterprise AI side, when we're working with, you know, really large corporations, then we do get into, um, you know, here's here's how it would interface, here's how it would be local and, and all that good stuff. But um, as far as the Raptor app goes, uh, we don't have any plans to make a desktop version of that right now. All right. And so, so can you possibly locally install? I mean, uh, uh, last time I talked to Eddie, he had talked a little bit about that as being able to localize the um, use of, of Raptor maps in the cloud base. Is that something that's still available? Yeah, or right now, you know, um, and, and I think the, you know, what we concluded when we talked last time is that there's certain features um, that you could set up a local server and do, but for, for our typical audience and, and what we've got here, um, I, it's not something that is is super easy to do. So, Understood. yeah, I think uh, we, we hear you, um, and I think that is a really frank conversation you, you got to have with your clients, and we provide, you know, it's, especially on the enterprise level, you know, security documentation and all that, uh, you know, um, to make sure that they both approve of um, our security protocols, which conform to the industry standards, as well as make sure they're just comfortable. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, if, uh, you know, for, for someone who's using the Raptor app, if they're saying it has to be completely local, um, right now, that's not something we're going to be able to do on, on kind of a one-off or individual basis. Okay. Uh, just answers that question. Hopefully that that uh, got your, your question answered, Drew. Um, I have a couple of other, let's see. Let's see, hold on one second. I found another good one here. So um, Tony Vonfell asks, uh, basically, how can we find the companies that are looking for a drone service provider that has a thermal camera and or a certified thermographer? And that does come down to some of the marketing of your own uh, capabilities as far as a drone service provider goes, but do you have any input with some of the customers that have uh, basically found that one company that needs a whole bunch of thermal solar, you know, whatever it is, solar inspection, roof inspection, other things like that? Have you had any guys that are more, are they more service providers or are they uh, operation and maintenance guys that are doing it for a big company? Any input there? Yeah, so it, it tends to be both. And, and um, you brought up a good point that I that I wanted to talk about was, you know, companies often decide whether they want to do things internally or or outsource them to uh, providers and drone professionals. And and the mm -hmm. answer is not that that one is better than the other. It, it just depends on, 
do they have a, a lot of assets? Are they are they concentrated in one area or are they spread out? Um, you know, do they have in are, are they typically early adopters or would they rather wait until it's mature and, and you know, use, um, you know, use services and things like that. So, um, you know, to answer your question, John, we, we see a lot of both uh, lots of companies, especially very large operations and maintenance providers with, you know, concentrated utility scale. Um, they tend to to fly their own drones, um, but there are tons of other companies out there that are really looking for um, for drone service providers. Um, and so how you find them is a, a few different ways. One is, um, you know, people that we work with, um, you know, we're happy to uh, make referrals in a certain geography and things like that. You know, we don't provide the services, but once in a while we do have someone saying, hey, do you know anyone in this city or this state or, or anything like that? Um, and we're happy to, to put you in contact. Um, the other thing I would highly recommend are industry events, um, especially in, in spaces like solar. You know, a lot of the business does tend to be done face to face um, trade shows, conferences. There tend to be regional ones. I know, for example, there's, you know, solar power northeast, solar power southwest, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the last thing I would recommend is, you know, you're always going to be able to look up who's installing solar, like, you know, and it may be residential solar. So that's probably not necessarily the people you want to focus on, but mm -hmm. that's a good place to start your network is to just understand who's advertising solar um, in, in your area, your neck of the woods and give them a call, uh, but give them a call with the understanding that they may not be the best end customer, but if you describe what you do and, and what the value is, they may be able to point you in the right direction or at least give you a sense of the, of the landscape in your area. Understood. So I have another one more question from uh, Chris, um, Chris Mitchell. This is going to be a two part because this is going to include something that I've always been asked as far as uh, um, subscription based stuff. So um, do you guys offer part number one, do you guys offer a trial subscription basically to um, try out the software, see how you're doing, uh, give you, a, you know, start an account and see if there's um, some of the, the uh, products that you offer fit for uh, what a person might do. That's number one. And then the other one that I get personally asked often, is there is there any way you guys do single output processing? Meaning that I just got one data dump I need to give to you. I just do a one-time fee. I pay for it. You guys kick me out something. Does that, is that something that works for um, your uh, type of uh, a business? So basically, do you offer trial and is there a possibility that I can just do a one-time purchase of just, I just need to do a, a quick map, stitch together, kick it out, here you go. You know, do you guys offer any type of things like that? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So starting with the second one, um, we do that for, um, for solar we do, right? So when people uh, come to us and, and want us to process it on a per megawatt basis, um, that, you know, that's delivered through some of the infrastructure um, that is the Raptor app, but that's, that is, uh, you know, on a purely uh, throughput basis for them. Uh, and then we still host it and it's, they still have an account and everything like that. So it's per site, per job, that kind of thing. Um, when it comes to the, um, the things like radiometric mapping and, and things like that, um, they need, yeah, they need to have a, a Raptor app account um, before they uh, request a, a job or anything like that. And, and the reason is, you know, when they upload that data and how they do that and how they make that request, it, it streamlines it for us. It puts it in the queue. It, you know, there's a lot that's happening um, right off the bat that um, makes it a lot easier for us to, to process. Um, mm -hmm. And then the Raptor app itself, um, talking about the free trial, and, and I do want to be very clear here. So, you know, we have three different products. There's the, the enterprise AI, that's, you know, machine learning for larger corporations that are trying to train new um, algorithms. Um, there's, you know, the Raptor Solar, which we talk about pretty extensively. And then there's the Raptor app for drone data management. So the way we charge for the Raptor app is, you know, a monthly fee. There's also a, a yearly you can do. It's significantly discounted and that's, um, that's $99. And so, you know, per month, per month. And so, you know, what you're able to do is you can, we don't, you, you do need a card to sign up um, and we do bill you for the first month. And the reason for that is if we had people signing up without a card on file and then they start ordering a bunch of stuff and, you know, we deliver them a bunch of product and, you know, we, we need to be able to to actually bill them for that. That being said, um, we do offer a 30 day return window. Um, so if you sign up for it, you try it, you poke around in it and, you know, for whatever reason, it's just not a good fit for you. 
um, you know, we do refund that. So effectively on the Raptor app, it is a free trial. Okay. All right. So like I said, this initial um, webinar was uh, intended to kind of give a reintroduction into Raptor Maps, some of the stuff that they're currently doing, but we're going to focus a little bit more on the next couple of series of webinars to show you kind of workflow, um, how we're going to, how we should process or, or capable of processing. Please, in, the, uh, in any of the questions, feedback or anything like that, emails back to me um, if you have any questions on products uh, to buy, best you know, cameras to get, those, those are gonna be kind of suited towards us. But keeping in mind that Nikhil had said, radiometric capability usually works best in order to do the, the type of work that he's uh, putting together to create the deliverables. We'll show a little bit more of the, again, the workflow, how it pops through. Um, expect that to come up on, uh, I believe that was April 24th. Um, I don't think we, really have a specific date signed up, but by that time, we're gonna use uh, John as the guinea pig to go out and do uh, basically some, some uh, information to pull so that we can get those over to Nikhil and Raptor Maps and then, and then they'll show us how we've uh, kind of walked through all of that. Yeah, we're um, gonna show you, you know, we talk about what makes good deliverables and everything like that, but I think yeah. what, what John and I really wanna show you guys next time is, is make it very concrete. You know, here's, here's what we flew, here's the equipment, here's exactly what the client would be receiving, all, all of that, so I think. And, and again, it, does, it doesn't specifically mean that if you don't have exactly what I have, means that you're not gonna do a good job, as Nikhil said, well, they'll work with what you've got. And that's, that's kind of an important thing to remember, that you don't have to get rid of all your equipment or go, oh man, John's got a 13 millimeter 640 and I have a nine millimeter. Yeah, yeah, so certainly not the case, but we do wanna show that sometimes images that are good and sometimes that images that are bad and, and things like that, you know, angles and, and movement and different workflow uh, capabilities are out there. So we've actually pushed this webinar to almost an hour. It's just, a, like I said, a good, uh, a good discussion of uh, what you guys are doing out there. Um, Nikhil, did you have any other comments that you wanted to uh, uh, add at, just at the end here? No, I think, uh, yeah, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we put a, a bit of new content on our on our blog. Um, so we've got a recap from um, the FLIR webinar, which was much more focused on here's how you fly a solar farm. So definitely take a look at that. And then we're also um, announcing our, uh, our solar contest winner uh, in the next day or two. And so um, with that will come some cool new images and, and deliverable mm -hmm. examples and things like that. So mm -hmm. just keep checking back. Okay. Um, so again, guys, just, just, just so that you know, and we'll have this pre, we'll have this recorded as well so that people can kind of see what we're, what we're up to and where we're going, but, uh, pay attention to the, the uh, emails that we're sending out as well as, uh, some of my Facebook, uh, posts that, uh, what we're working on and what we're doing as far as, uh, doing, um, specific deliverables with Raptor Maps. So we'd like to, I'd like to thank those guys again for, um, staying so focused on, on some of the stuff that we're, uh, able to do. And the reason why I like uh, working with Raptor Maps as far as the uh, uh, specific de deliverables that they have. So um, no specific reason other than, um, the again, talking about what, what these guys are doing today and where they see the industry kind of going in the uh, uh, thermal side infrastructure and uh, possibly others. So um, please, like I said, just go ahead and if I didn't get to your questions today, um, we'll have it cataloged. We'll get those over to Raptor Maps. Those will try to be addressed and shot back to you as far as uh, some of the other specific questions on, you yeah, know. And John, like, we'll, put the, we'll put the answers in a, in a blog post. So, you know, anyone who, uh, who didn't get their question answered today, um, you can look for that. Yeah, perfect. I uh, just wanted to throw one more out there. Um, <laughs> the last comment or last question I got is, thank you, Mufasa. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you guys, we appreciate it. Uh, if you guys again have any other questions, just let us know and uh, feel free to let me know if there's anything else uh, specific that might be re re uh, related to uh, Raptor Maps and trying to help them really get the industry focused on some of the cool stuff out there. So thanks again, Nikhil. You're welcome. Thank you everyone Bye. for tuning in. All right, thanks guys, we appreciate it a ton.